Purification process, removal of porous material, washing everything with oxidized bleach until it tests negative. Then, the reason that everything is white, then an oil-based primer, okay? So, this ceiling came there and it was beautiful. It sloped and waved and was this cool thing and kind of went there, but everything you see over here that's not white, that is the reframing. So you see how extensive it was and how that was like the roofers would have fallen through. If you look right here, the white timber up above, they join and overlap like that. That was, I mean, that is not up to code and that's not how things would be done now, but that's how it was. So, of course, they had to reframe that. They had to tear that ceiling down in order to do that. And it's just where it's like, okay, historic preservation versus, and at the same time, the roof is damaging the sandstone, the sandstone's falling off, we have to get a roof on it. It just, you know, they don't always work in sync with each other. Um, so, because that process had ended, we were done, we had fulfilled what we needed to, uh, to finish that, it's over. Then we just said, drop the ceiling, get up there, reframe everything. Um, the windows, I remember we had to remove, repair, and retain. They've been removed, they have not been repaired, they have been retained, but there was no time limit set on it. So we have an indefinite amount of time to <laughs> do that. So John, those windows over there, is that what that hole was, or uh, that window? These. Okay, it's I'm starting to lose my Yeah. Memory. So I want to take that um, to ask you one more question, and then maybe we can gather yeah. in the room and get some sure. student questions. But we've we've read about the history of the, the site and a lot about, from, heard from both of you about the process. Could you talk us through the next five years or the next 10 years? What, what's the rest of the vision for inside as we see it now? Well, so we're now looking at the final 1.5 million that we still need to basically very simply get the inside renovated. They're finishing the outside now. It had to be a complete rebuild of sandstone. Um, and that's, they're stuccoing everything now. John, did they ever figure out that sandstone, how that sandstone was staying vertical? Because the uh, last time I was engaged with the project, people were still trying to figure out how that wall was tied into the actual structure. Because it's not structural. It wasn't. So what happened yeah, after what Snowmageddon, whatever, yes, two or three years ago, after that, <laughs> stone then started to actually fall off right over here. Right. We might um, have to go outside, actually, instead of the office. So it's, it's, it's instructive to know. If you guys remember Snowpocalypse, right? So um, out in out in um, western Idaho, where we grow about in, in eastern Oregon, where we grow about 30% of the world's onions, they lost a significant number of their onion sheds. Just woof, too much snow. Okay, if this roof, if this superstructure hadn't been put in, if the roof hadn't been reframed and shored and, and repaired, I promise you, I promise you, that would have been more than sufficient enough force to just push that whole, that whole roof structure out. And because none of this rock was connected to anything, it would have just been a cascade of sandstone yeah. in every direction. Yeah. Horrible. And then do you remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you remember this one. I know that guy does. <laughs> <laughs> this is a telephone thing. <laughs> Anyone got a dime? That's where the phrase drop a dime comes from, by the way. We're going to rewire this <laughs> and have it kind of... We've tried to pull in parts of history back into this building, but uh, we're going to rewire that, and it's like dial one for a quote from children's literature, dial two to record your own story, dial three to listen to someone else's short story, dial four for a, you know country western song or whatever. <laughs> also, they put metal in the walls. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, the original studs were, you know, this. Because the walls were getting pushed out, that reinforced that. 
These are the roof. Right. This is the walls. And you can even look at that pillar and see how it's not plumb. Those walls are still out. So um, that sandstone started falling off. And we brought in the, what we thought was a $40,000 patch job. Turned out to be an $800,000 plus thousand dollar complete rebuild. Yeah. And they said, if you don't address every sandstone on the outside of this building, it's going to keep happening because the mortar was just like, there was no adhesion, yeah. it was just powder. Yeah. Now they have rebuilt it and tied it and put in moisture barrier and I mean, any areas that were damaged, they rebuilt. Um, I mean, it's actually stronger now than it first was. But the reality is, is you, again, this is important because it's historic preservation. It's also important to realize that John probably could have bought three properties and built three of these structures for what you had to put into this. And that's what, but that's what historic preservation costs. Um, Dave Hale, when he redid um, the, the American Linen Building uh, downtown, 14th and Grove, right next to Big City Coffee, all part of the same redevelopment plan. And that's a good brownfield, that's a good brownfield story too sometime. Um, but, uh, you know, for what it cost him to renovate that place and get it cleaned up, he, he could have built it twice. But it's historic preservation. It's expensive. Preserving history costs something. I want to make a comment about that because we have tours, just spontaneous tours that happen. People walk by the building and they're with their kids and they want to come in. And one time uh, a woman brought a couple children in and the minute the daughter, she was maybe six, stepped in, she goes, oh, you know, and it just, yeah. it's so important to remember that because this place has been expensive to save. And people ask the question, you know, what's the value of that? Like, how do you know it's worth it? And then when you see children inspired by the actual place, I mean, not only are we going to be offering the art classes for them, the dance, the music, the theater, but they get to be in here and witness the architecture and the history and the historic preservation. And when they come in, they see castle. Yeah. And they imagine Renaissance fairs or whatever it is. or poetry off the balcony or whatever it is they imagine, but they're inspired. And you can really see it the minute they step in here. Well, in 80 years from now, when, when John's daughters are talking to their grandkids about this place, and, and they say, wait a minute, people were not taking care of it, or they were thinking about tearing it down, that's where you see the value of historic preservation. Like, we're right here. We're in the forest. We might not see it as much, but everybody that comes after us, I think, would, would certainly appreciate that. That's mm, true. Um, and to me, it goes even a little deeper than that, or a lot deeper. It, there's a message there, and whether it's spelled out for them verbally, or it's just absorbed, is respect. And that they are, this was created for them. And it was saved. And isn't that kind of the same story in life? Like, I mean, to me, someone who's doing that, the process you want them to go through. Get off the meth, clean it up, become a place of, become a contributing person once again. The building, the remediation process is that same story that offers hope and that, you know, the things that we see going on all around us. You guys have been born into kind of a critical time, I feel. I mean, you're seeing social media and um, political turmoil and global warming and disconnect and shootings and the very thing that will heal that is a sense of respect for yourself and for each other and what's around you and that's why these things give that message to children so it, it to me it goes that deep actually. It goes that deep for this. Um, and are there any questions that you guys have? Should we go outside? I think, I think we, we should, should see it because the, the sandstone project was really significant because it wasn't budgeted in at all. <laughs> and yeah. so what <laughs> happened after Snowmageddon is we started seeing the sandstone right. blocks actually fall out of the entryways. So it was 
completely unsafe. <laughs> it was like, well, these need to get fixed. And like John said, we thought $40,000 repair job. But it ended up that they took down every single block and reinforced it with concrete and rebar, poured new footings, put it all back up. So it's really worth looking at. Um, it feels, I don't know if anyone ever walked by before, if you have a sense of what it looked like before, but now it's just so stable, so strong, so beautiful. It's really worth seeing. So it should be, this should building should be able to last double what it did up to the point where John yeah. took it over, yeah. Yeah. frankly. Mm -hmm. That thing you came in, we'll give you guys each a postcard. I have those postcards. Let's give them each a, when a, a photograph of when it was originally built, 1907. You can even see a horse and buggy parked in the alley <laughs> in the photograph. But it's going to look exactly the same. That I'm talking about that battlement castle thing that's just on that side of that. But that original one completely torn down. They had to pour footings with rebar to brace it, rebuild it. Um, those pillars that are stucco were just sitting on the original sandstone. Now that it's like anchored down like 12 feet into the ground. Um, so, uh, yeah, it really is the same geometry, but in some ways it's like a completely new building built inside of the shell, and even the shell was kind of rebuilt. But, you know, it's going to be worth it and all up to code and beautiful. Um, any other questions? Lots of questions, but let's ask them outside, outside yeah. and then okay. I'm sure all of you have questions. He thinks that it is the tail of a catfish. <laughs> wow. But now keep in mind, this was the quarry at Table Rock when that was covered with water. Yeah. So like millions. Yeah, that would have been a catastrophic event to be able to capture that in there and preserve it. Really? That would have been a mass wasting event. Some, some big thing crumpled and went down and it caught that thing there. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Now the other half. Point out, they're doing a nail gun 